Welcome to Geek Out Virtual Con, the replay of our special two-day live streaming event, April 11 through 12, 2020. This is the Women in Business segment with our special guests, Marianne Richards, a story brand certified marketer, Pam Meisel Smith of Evolution Partners Insurance, Mauricia Malvo, an artist and actress, and Suzanne Shoemaker, the CEO of Undercare. So coming in is Meredith for the next panel. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, you guys, I really appreciate you. And, um, you know, we're the, the next session is going to be women in business. So it is a little switch in things. So um, I don't know if I lost uh, if I lost uh, Vendetta and um, let's see, Cat. Cat. I think no. Cat's already gone. All right. Well, you guys are welcome no, to come back on and um, and talk with us, you know, because we are women in business. Mm -hmm. And um, I just wanted to kind of go around the table and let you guys introduce yourselves, uh, where we can find you and what you do. So, uh, Pam, you want to start? Sure. I'm with uh, Evolution Partners Insurance, and you can find us at evolutionpartnersinsurance.com. Actually, it's ins.com. And did you want me to tell you about the business or you want to just uh, that's yeah, so we're, we're just going to do a quick introduction and then we're going to get we're going to deep dive into the different businesses and what we do, our, our models and things like that. Yeah. Did you have anything else? So you did okay. want me to explain it? You want me to explain oh, OK, well, we'll, we'll go on to Suzanne. So <laughs> we'll go, on to Suzanne. go ahead. Okay. Evolution Partners, <laughs> INS.com, and it's yours, Suzanne. OK. Hi, hello, Meredith. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm Suzanne Leary Shoemaker. I'm the founder and the CEO of Undercare Inc. I design and I manufacture adaptive clothing, which is also known as fashion inclusive clothing, uh, clothing that is adapted so that it makes it easier to put on and take off for people who have trouble dressing. Mm -hmm. And you can and find I, you know, I call you Vendetta, so I'm going to let you go <laughs> ahead and introduce yourself and what you do. Love the mask. Oh, don't don't yeah. mind the mask. Oh, I don't mind is. the mask at all. <laughs> Everybody's wearing them. <laughs> Just not over there. You know, you know, you know how that goes. Um, no, like I, I, I'm I'm uh, SK Mavo, and I also write uh, for a comic book called uh, Music Maker that has actual downloadable music within the story itself. So that's what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, our our panel is a little bit different. And uh, part of the reason why we included uh, Women in Business panel during Geek Out Virtual Con is because Geek Insider actually handles a lot of different things. You know, we're, we're, we're not just comics or uh, entertainment music yeah. comic books cosplay and things like that we actually do a lot of things in business and so i just thought uh you know to have a woman's spin on it because i felt uh really outnumbered by all the guys that are out there and <laughs> so i stole i stole an hour i stole an yay. hour so that we could talk yay for for the girls um you know and i wanted to talk about our different the different things that we do um yeah. you know and it's it's not cool and it's not um it's not flashy it's not necessarily entertainment except for you know Harrenberg here but uh, <laughs> you know i mean but there is there is a business behind what you do uh so i just wanted to pam if you wanted to kind of expand on what you do and then you know share where we can find you what you do um and and how it helps uh, you know with because we had this conversation before. Um, insurance is, a lot of people don't understand it. It's a big yeah. snore and uh, it's it's confusing for a lot of people. So yeah. can you explain what you do with Evolution Partners? Yeah, I just kind of want to backtrack though a little bit about the women and uh, women being very creative. And I don't know, can you guys see this sign? Let's see, right there. Can you guys see that? Yeah. The women, the women in, uh, the evolution. Hold on, let me, let me yeah. Yeah, it starts off, you know, with the Neanderthal foot, you know, the animal foot, and then a barefoot, and then a man's shoe, and then a woman's heel. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. Uh, you know, everything I've ever been involved in always has to do with helping people. 
And this is a really unique industry, the insurance industry. I My background actually is a therapist from way, way back. But I got into the insurance industry and um, I actually worked um, with the, on the company side. Like you guys are familiar with the insurance carriers. The most common ones, you know, you'll hear like travelers or, you know, maybe uh, farmers or all state, those kind of things that maybe the consumer hears about. But behind the scenes, there's a whole nother industry that has to do with businesses and and these independent agencies need to have access to these insurance carriers. And it's very difficult to do. And I was on the carrier side and I ran small business for a large uh, company for many years. And I found that uh, these smaller agents, you know, the ones you see on the corner, these agents that help um, insureds get their insurance, they are unable to go directly to these insurance carriers. And they have to use like a middleman to get to these companies. And, and when you do that, they have to split commission, their name isn't on their policies. And, you know, I, I know I'm getting kind of um, into it into an area that a lot of people don't know about, but it's really important because these, these agencies, they're never going to be independent if they always have to use like someone in the middle. They're not making the kind of money that they could make. And um, so what I did is I left the company side and I joined partners with actually a, a gentleman and his partner that were one of my agents. And we formed Evolution Partners. And the whole goal is to help these independent agents get to these carriers. But, but we're not taking their commission. It's their business, and, and we're helping these smaller agencies grow. So it's really, um, I'm kind of giving you a high-level overview, but it's really exciting because I get to help uh, smaller agents grow. They're developing the re relationships themselves, and, and we play a part in, in making that all happen. So mm -hmm. at the end of the day, I'm still doing what I've always done and, and helping other people grow their businesses. Now, it's all about small business. You know, everything we hear nowadays is about small business, especially what's going on, you know, right now with, with the COVID-19. So mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of a, a short version yeah. of it. Um, I'm going to pull in uh, Suzanne here if you want to think about that. And uh, and then, like, when we're done introducing ourselves and, and the businesses and things like that, I want to I want to you guys to think about like what what it was that prompted you to go on this path how you thought outside of the box to to do what you do so suzanne i'm just going to let you come on here and um okay. you know tell us about under care and what yeah. you do okay well um uh, several years ago i was i came out of the swimming pool at the ymca in white plains new york and i was observing some elderly women who were struggling to dress and um I, they were having such difficulty and it took them a really long time. And I was really taken by how determined they were to self-dress. And also I was touched and I sort of felt sorry for them that it was so difficult for them. So um, I've always been creative. I'm actually trained as an artist. And um, I part of my training involved um, doing dissections, um, and learning all the bones and muscles in the human body, understanding lift mechanisms, things like that. Um, so when I saw these women struggling, I thought, why hasn't somebody come up with a new kind, a new way to put on underwear that is that does not require bending, balancing, putting your leg and foot through a leg opening? So I, I had this idea, it was spinning in my head. And I went home and my kids said, you know, mom, you always have these great ideas. Just do do it. So I started cutting up undergarment around the house um, and sewing them together. And I came up with a working prototype um, that instead of bending, balancing, or standing on one leg and having to insert a foot and leg through a leg opening, you simply wrapped and fastened with soft and flexible Velcro. So the, cat, the idea is that you know, most adaptive clothing is really quite unattractive. It was designed in the 1970s and it's horrible fabrication. So here, so what I did was I designed under Oh my gosh. That look like regular That's amazing. Clothing. Yes, but you see it all comes apart and you just simply wrap it around and fasten it. 
and then pull it through your legs and fasten on the right and left sides. So it took, um, you know, most products go through about three iterations before they go to market. I'm sure that I went through at least 10 iterations and it was an entirely new industry for me. I knew nothing about, um, you know, making patterns, sewing prototypes. I People asked about um, woven or knit. I did not even know the difference. People talked about fit models. I knew nothing about that. So fortunately, I live in New York and I had access to the garment district. So I could just sort of go into New York, pound the pavement, go into shops, ask questions. So eventually um, I found um, support and um, I also went to, um, for, for, um, I needed intellectual property protection. So I went to a, um, a IP lawyers in New York and it's kind of a funny story. I, I took my hand sewn homemade prototypes and um, this is before I'd been through all the iterations. This was early on. And I went into this, you know, conference room with the floor to ceiling glass windows and you could see the Statue of Liberty in the background and, you know, the whole thing. And the lawyers came in all buttoned up and I was just, I just wanted to run out of the room. I felt incredibly embarrassed about the idea of pulling out this homemade cut up underwear. But fortunately, they did not laugh at me. And they said, you know, you don't know how many people come into a patent office without a working prototype and they just have something written on a napkin. So mm -hmm. they loved that, that I had something that actually worked. And also the fact that I was the sole inventor and the sole owner of the idea at that point. Uh, they also like that. So, um, yeah. So now I have five patents. I've designed the men's brief the women's brief and now i've moved into bathing suits wow uh, which also are very cute awesome wow okay and we're it's like the little black dress of bathing suits <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah so it's really been a steep learning curve for me it was not i worked in publishing after college then i went to graduate school in art um so it was a a, a turn to to go into this um but i really loved it i loved um it was challenging to learn all that there was to learn but i've, I've really enjoyed it and then of course that's the creative side which is my wheelhouse um but then there is as is our discussion focus today the whole business part of this so right. that also was well we're, we're gonna circle around to that because i want to let the i keep calling you vendetta Vendetta. What am I calling? Because you've got your mask on. You got you've got your mask on. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm rocking the mask. So, uh, but yeah, yeah um, no, like <laughs> in addition to uh, playing Vendetta on uh, the Heroin Berg series, um, I also write for uh, the Music Maker, which is a music-based comic. Um, and what I mean by music based is that it also has um, scannable music that you can scan with your phone and listen to music that's actually going on in the story as you're reading the story. Wow. So yeah, and, and it's 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 it's, it's different. That's di I mean that's different. That's our hook. Um, but also like I like to think like I'm I'm the writer of the series and everything and. Um, the uh the illustrator is in uh mexico currently um and we've been just communicating online and so we haven't been nearly as affected by the whole corona thing as like other industries have but um yeah like i i mean i like to think that um the initial hook is the fact that we have downloadable music within the story um the second hook is the artwork and then the third hook is my my little contribution, which is the story. So mm -hmm. very unique. Yeah, I mean, and you have the whole you yeah. have the whole production side of that, you know, from from creation to production, and then trying to market yeah. that out as well. And speaking of marketing, we have Marianne mm -hmm. Richards here, and um, you came in a little bit late, so uh, we didn't get to introduce you. But if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and and your business. Well, Meredith, thanks for having me. I apologize. I had some technical difficulties, but I'm here. We all do. Uh, as you said, my name is Marianne Richards, and I'm a marketing consultant. And what does that mean? Well, a lot of businesses struggle to create or have marketing that sells for them. 
So I help businesses create a brand strategy and a messaging that really connects with their ideal customers and helps them grow their business. So I've been in sales and marketing, <clears throat> excuse me, for over 20 years, uh, everything from startups to Fortune 100 companies. And what is really powerful with what I do now and has really been part of what I've done for 20 years is really focus on what is it that is the customer's problem? What's the problem and how does your business solve that problem? And then what transformation do you have for your clients once they work with you? And when you can weave that into your message, it is so powerful. Pam and I work together with her website and she can attest to how powerful that really is. And it's really simple, but it's just one of those things that, you know, business owners are, are business owners. They're, you know, they're really good at what they do and not as good at the marketing part. So I love what I do and I love that I get to help businesses grow. And I work with clients all over the world. So it's really exciting. I just needed a computer and Zoom and we're off to the racing. Yeah. It's a great yeah. thing. You know, one of the things I think that we all have in common is that, uh, I mean, uh, on top of having boobs here, all right. <laughs> we we have this attitude. We have this attitude of just do it. You know, we're we're kind of you know, yeah. we we are just not to sorry Nike. You know, but we we are we are just doing it. We're taking the things that we're good at and passionate about, and we're tr we're spinning it on its head, and we're creating something. Uh, you know, maybe out of struggle or adversity, uh, maybe pushing back and things like that. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you ever feel like you've ever hit the ceiling, uh, you know, the glass ceiling? Was there ever one for you? Or do you feel like, um, you know, are you blazing the trail for others? Or do you feel like um, maybe somebody inspired you and broke through that for you? Tune in to find out more after this 30 second break. Hey guys, Matthew here with geekinsider.com and I just wanted to give a quick shout out to one of our sponsors, mobileedge.com. If you're a gamer and looking for some gear to protect your gaming gear, Mobile Edge has gaming backpacks, they've got totes, they've got all kinds of carrying cases and tech for today's mobile lifestyle. Protect your tech with Mobile Edge, look sharp, travel smart, Mobile Edge, bring it on. <laughs> we we have this attitude we have this attitude of just do it you know we're we're kind of I love that. you know yeah. we we are just not to sorry nike you know but we we are we are just doing it we're taking the things that we're good at and passionate about and we're tr we're spinning it on its head and we're creating something uh, you know, maybe out of struggle or adversity, uh, maybe pushing back and things like that. So I wanted to ask you guys, do you ever feel like you've ever hit the ceiling, uh, you know, the glass ceiling? Was there ever one for you? Or do you feel like, um, you know, are you blazing the trail for others? Or do you feel like um, maybe somebody inspired you and broke through that for you? Who wants to go first? Yeah, well, uh, Go ahead, Pam. You said well first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, before I answer your question or talk about um, all that enthusiasm of forging forward, I want to plug Marianne because Marianne, what she does in her business is she really dives deep into what's important to you and she pulls it out, which is so different from so many other companies. Like she said, she built out our website. And my daughter actually added a page to what Marianne did, but Marianne was the, the catalyst for the whole website. And um, so definitely it's very unique on what Marianne does because she learns and dissects what each company does so that it's about that person, not about what she thinks it should be. I just had to say that. Uh, yeah, so Marianne, I, I think that uh, important. just from our introductions and things, it, it yeah. kind of sounds like we're all a little bit of an empath, you know, yes. when it comes to dealing yes. with people. Yeah, I think so. And I think that's, that's so important to think about the other person. It's not people always say, oh, you know, you're in sales. I'm like, well, I've been in sales my whole life, but I don't look at myself as a salesperson. I look at myself as a people person. And it truly is about thinking from their perspective and what can help them. And that's what makes Evolution Partners um, so unique 
And um, there's many companies that are very similar to our our company, uh, but they don't put the the company first, and they don't listen to what the need is. Because I I help small businesses like Marianne does, and they're it's a unique business. They're insurance agents, but they all have their desires and what they want to do and how they see themselves growing. But no one out there is really helping them. And just to be that advocate of that person where they know they always have someone to go to that can help them. And, you know, until I retire, which who knows when that'll ever be, because I really don't, I'm like, you know, I can work from home. I can work all over the world, thank God. And all I need is a phone and, and a computer. But to be able to, to help people like that and grow their businesses and then you're connected. It's, you know, everything to me, I always say this is about relationship. And uh, it, it's nothing else. It doesn't matter. It's all about how you connect with people and the relationship you have with people, no matter what, how much money you have or not. Uh, and so that, I think, is the most unique thing in the success of any business. And like you said, um, Suzanne, you said, just do it. I've had that saying, just forget it. Don't, don't worry about how or, or if somebody else says, no, it's not supposed to be done that way. It's like, whatever, just do it. Figure out a way to do it. And I think women are very creative because we've, I think we're innately, we've had to multitask. We've had to figure out ways to do things. And of course, my background, you know, led to where I am today, of course, you know, all of our, the way we're brought up and what you go through makes you be who you are. But um, I love that. Suzanne about you and how you came up with that idea because that was really unique and just think of all the people that you're helping too. Thanks. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, we're just, well, I have to say in truth, I mean, in many ways I have felt supported in my business because there is a huge push for women in entrepreneurship and I've fortunately been able to take advantage of a lot of that. So um, there are a lot of resources. Um, in, ter in terms of um, gender discrimination kind of thing, I guess I came across that more, um, my factory is in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, far away. Wow. And, uh, boy, it took me a long time to find it too. But anyway, I have great factory. Um, they do great work. But I traveled to Sri Lanka alone and mm -hmm. stayed in a bed and breakfast. And uh, everybody kept saying your husband didn't come with you you're here alone yeah. and mm -hmm. they were so it was such an odd thing to be a woman alone in business but i just felt like you know what i'm just gonna push through and um and i did and i i think i have good relationships with them but i do think uh i i really felt it in that moment mm -hmm. yeah. there is so much great help for women in business right now perfect timing and i think Times have really changed. It was a lot harder back when we started. There was a lot of discrimination, especially, you know, among the older generation when we first joined the workforce. But there were also pockets of people that were very open to, hey, if you can do the job, you know, great. And then, you know, and, and then you find your allies. Now, you know, the world is so different that with the internet, you can do anything, right? I mean, you could be a filmmaker, you can have just a a 35 millimeter camera that takes HD and, and a computer and you can build movies, right? So yeah. the world has really changed. And I think women are starting to really have a network and really support one another, which I think is really important. And I think there's been an overall acceptance more of women in you know leadership positions. So it's all been great. You know, it's we kind of yeah. built it on, you know, with each other and now it's it's really finally coming to the point where, you know, the sky is the limit. You can do whatever. And it's really yeah. your mindset that holds you back, not the opportunities. Yeah, right. And, well, I, and I know in Heronburg, it's mostly women, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's the majority it's, of women in that operation. It's okay. So the concept behind it is that um, a meteorite comes and it affects the, um, the X chromosome. And so it's only women who um, become these superheroines and super villains. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I love it. Um, but, yeah, um, but in my own, like in my own um, 
what I, to, to branch off of um, what we were talking about, um, I'll, I'll talk about it very lightly um, about the uh, the concept of a um, a glass ceiling and everything. Um, I, I I guess I'm lucky in the sense that I'm in that generation that didn't have to feel that I was inhibited by my gender. I always like it was just it it was the quality and the and I, and I also like I'm an art ed major to give you an idea. So um, um, yeah, like. I was never inhibited by um, notions that my gender was going to somehow inhibit the way that I was going to make art or I was going to, um, you know, make my way in the world. And I think that's just such a testament to everyone before me and everyone, hopefully everyone after me, um, that we are, you know, it's, it's, it's not the issue that it used to be, you know? No. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. And so now I, I kind of want to dive into what uh, what each of us do. You know, Pam, we yeah. we had a previous conversation before uh, with uh, Evolution Partners. And I want you to, you know, let us know again where we can follow you so that our audience, if they're just tuning in, uh, knows. And I, each one of you, if you could do that. But, you know, in our conversation, I almost I said that it was almost like the matchmaker of um, your smaller agents to your uh, to the ad um, carriers, the big carriers. Because um, for me, I'm a writer, and uh, you know, I've I've had bricks and mortar businesses. You know, we had a deli. Uh, my husband and I had a deli, and uh, you know, my family's had a, my family has a restaurant, and so we've been in these different uh, areas of small business. Um, connections are everything. And uh, as a writer, the the way that I could kind of figure out what you were doing in my head was by comparing it to something that I know. And so for me as a writer, if I want to go to a big house, uh, not the big house, but if I wanted to go to one of the major publishing houses, <laughs> I have to go through an agent. I have to go through a middleman because the the the, the they don't want to hear from me directly. And it right. kind of sounded that's what you do. Can you explain a little bit more about that and help us wrap our brain around it? Yeah. Well, unfortunately, most of these agencies that you see on the corner that have their little retail shop, you know, that help you purchase your homeowner's insurance or your business insurance, most of them have to do exactly what you just said. They have to use a middleman. Because the way that the insurance industry works is you have this big carrier over here, this big company over here, and then you have this, these individual agents or agencies. And these carriers do not want to talk to you. Very similar to what you said, Meredith. And, you know, they want the large ones, the ones that are making a lot of money, that are producing a lot of volume. And so what I did, and this is where the relationship, again, always comes into play, because I've been in the industry for so long and I worked on the side that they're on, I know the way they work, I know the MO and what the requirements are. I went to each carrier. I mean, I, I have, I've partnered with probably about 15 mainstream commercial carriers and some personal lines carriers. And I went to them and say, hey, I know what you want, I know what you need, I know why you don't allow these small guys to work directly with you but what if i act as the middleman for you so you don't have to deal with these little guys i will help them grow and i will connect you too and so they agreed to that so i have agreements and uh i say we have agreements with these companies and basically they've agreed to allow me to connect them but on a smaller scale as long as i kind of like manage them but i'm not going to take away their business they're going to get a hundred percent of their commission all the all the policies are going to come in their name they're going to own their book very differently than the situation you're talking about where there's that middleman that's there and takes most of their stuff so the whole goal is to help these these little guys become independent and that they can they can continue to flourish and once you get one company to do it it allows another company to do it another company to do it so they're very grateful 
um, for this opportunity. And what makes me feel so good is just to see these agencies grow. And, you know, we get paid on the back end from the company. We're not getting paid from the carrier, from the uh, small independent agency. So it, it takes us kind of out of the mix. So hopefully that's yeah, I, and I'm going to say a, a little bit, and I'm going to say that uh, I think maybe for another day, you know, a future interview or something like that, you can kind of explain how you approached those carriers because that couldn't have been easy and you must have had a lot of no's. So, but we'll, we'll probably save that for another time because I want to get over to Suzanne yeah. and, you know, again, with those, those relationships and you said that traveling, I would never personally travel, travel to Sri Lanka by myself. Um, you know, my, in fact, my husband, uh, he loves me, but he's uh, very protective. He didn't like me just traveling up the East Coast by myself when I was up uh, visiting family. And stuff. So that must have been a challenge. And, uh, you know, with the production of the adaptive clothing and underwear that you do, um, you know, I, you are definitely helping people, but how did how did you find those connections? What was your pathway like? It was a. It's been a long runway. It's been a really long yeah. runway, and and you know, it's interesting because I find that the way I learn is just I have to learn it myself. So somebody can tell me something, and I don't just take their word for it. I you know, go through the whole process. Can you hear me? I'm, I'm yes. I think I'm having some, okay. So I, um, right. So I just do things my way, trial and error. I think it takes a little longer, but I think probably the quality of the learning ultimately is better. But um, yes, I found lots of wonderful relationships with other women. Um, but I think in, in all fairness, I think men have been extremely supportive too. Um, and you're, I, I do think you're right about the relationships. You do have to establish a bond, um, you know, integrity, honesty. Yeah. Um, you know, you have to be realistic about it. Um, everybody's in it to make money, but, but you know, the whole question of fairness and, and transparency. And you learn, you learn from your mistakes. Um, I haven't had any huge mistakes, but I've had a few near misses. Um, did I answer the question? I, I wish I could say that. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> if, if I, I, right, I know. I was like, if I, if I'm doing something, I try to be as, you know, like close to the 99% to 100% correct because when I screw up, man, it, it's oh. like nuclear. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no and, then have, and then I have no choice. I have to own it. We'll be back right after this break. Cards, the universe, and everything is a trading card, card collecting, battle card game that has a little something from everything. From the old west to outer space and everything in between, Cards, the universe, and everything is great for gamers and collectors of all ages. Download it from your app store, and as you collect hundreds of available cards, there are more weekly, so you can craft up to 10 decks and battle against your friends and other players from around the world. And if you're an educator, check out CardsTheUniverseAndEverything.com for a special offer for you and your students transparency and you learn you learn from your mistakes um, I haven't had any huge mistakes but I've had a few near misses um, did I answer the question I, I wish I could say that <laughs> <laughs> usually oh, if, if I, I right I know I was like if I if I'm doing something I try to be as you know like close to the 99% to 100% correct because when I screw up man it, it's oh. like nuclear <laughs> <laughs> No and, then have, and then I have no choice. I have to own it. I, I'm like, it was me. I'm a, I'm a dummy. But um, so, uh, Marianne, I'm going to go to you really quickly because with the type of business that you do, and you know, we were talking about being empaths and and really connecting so that we know what those clients want, what our customers want, uh, and even in in comic books and music, you know, who our audience is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's going to take a lot of energy. Um, tell us about what you do, your process, and how you you connect with your clients in order so that they can have the voice that they want. Because obviously, you're you're kind of like that middleman mm -hmm. for them. Absolutely, 
And the key is really letting them know that the story is not about them, it's about their customer. So we have to do an extensive discovery process to really find out, and like Pam said, really dig into what is it that you're off, what solution every service or product does solve a problem. That's why you're on the market. People buy it to make their life better, to save money, you know, some reason. But a lot of times the marketing doesn't reflect that. And so I talk to them about it. What is your customer's biggest problem? You know, what it, who is your customer? Really dig into that to find out what is it, you know, what are the things that they do? What's, what one problem? Because you really have to focus on the most important problem you solve. If you give them five, it's like a, a movie that has five different plots, right? You can't keep track of it and then you're not interested anymore. So when you focus on that, you start asking them questions. I always tell my clients, it's all in your head. I don't know any of this, right? It's just my job to tease it out, to understand your business. And then I take the magic as you do, Meredith, when you write, right? It's the magic of words and putting it in to a paragraph that's so glittering that people go, I get it. I need that, right? Yeah. And when you can do that, it's amazing how it turns the corner for sales because it's just saying the right words and really connecting or attracting those ideal customers. When you talk to them and you're kind of drawing them at, drawing into their story, right? About their life and what they need, you know, it it becomes very simple and you attract people. Mm -hmm. But it is a lot of work in the forefront. The writing part is hard but you have to get all those pieces together to understand what you're writing about. Yeah. And then also with Heroinberg also with um, the entertainment side of things, you know, you have, I'm, I'm kind of curious to know whether or not it was based on like an alternate universe that you want to live in or was, you know, the audience that you're reaching now, is it the audience that you intended or is it the audience that you kind of, uh, that kind of um, I think adopted we're, you? I, I think we're gradually growing, honestly. Like, um, I think it, it was definitely going to hit on certain points because it was Heroinberg, because it was, you know, uh, female centric um, uh, superheroes and supervillains. And that was one of the beautiful things about it was that it was going to it was going to plug into this um, market that I don't think I, I don't think has really been really been tapped into as much as it can be. Like we, we're starting to get there, I think. But um, so what is but, the market? What's the market? Uh, the market, if I had to say, was like, you know, this interest in uh, female superheroes mm -hmm. and, you know, just, you know, female centri centric stories and, um, you know. But but they're not young girls either. I mean, it seems not like your demographic is kind of like, uh, I, if I were to guess, I would say probably you're in your 30s, you know, maybe a little bit younger, give or take and, and things yeah, like that. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that and that's and that has been um, we're tapping into a lot of uh, interest at a much younger level, but we're also tapping mm -hmm. into an interest at a much older level as well. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you are seeing these um, super heroines who are you know between their like their twenties or thirties somewhere around there, but you're also um, really inspiring younger generations and really inspiring older generations as well. So, I mean, it's, it, 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 it's, we're, we're getting across the board, I think, is what we're doing. It seems like it would be a great idea to really do some that are focused on young girls because they're, think about that. Like, yeah. you know, there used to be, you know, mostly it's heroes that are boys, right? But you had, you know, growing up like Nancy Drew or Trixie, you know, Belden, you know, where they were, you know, kind of superior and they were, you know, in intellect. And so that would be really fun for, for girls to have that, you know, young girls that are superheroes that they could look up to and say, hey, you know, I, I can do these things too. 
Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And yeah. that's one. And I'm gonna go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. I'm, I'm I'm done. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, I was gonna say, like uh none of us are in our teens. I'm just gonna leave that at that. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> We're not in our teens. So we have the benefit of wisdom of going back and, and you know, like uh, one of the questions that I love to ask, and Pam's been asked this before, is like if you were to go back and ask your, you know, or t tell yourself one thing, uh, you know, or one piece of advice to your younger self, what would it be? And, you know, because we are where we are now. I mean, we've been through the struggles. I mean, I've been through motherhood. I'm, my youngest is 21 now, you know, so I don't, I don't have those issues anymore, but I've been through them. And so when we share our stories and we share our experience, we are, we're imparting this wisdom to help the next generation. And, and we're kind of in that age group all of us where we're, we're juggling both okay. sides. You've got the young ones and then you've got the older ones. And, and that's, you know, finding that balance without losing ourselves and still going out there and doing these businesses and, and promoting these ideas is really um, a testament to what this entire panel does. I want to say. And uh, again, Pam, I, I want you to, I'm, I'm starting off with you because you're kind of clockwise to me here. Um, you know, tell uh, us again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one in the middle. <laughs> uh, you know, where we can find you because we've got 20 minutes left on this panel. I wanted to make sure that everybody uh, in our audience, uh, whether you're watching live or, you know, whether you're watching us on replay, uh, to be able to connect with these ladies and, you know, find out what they do, how they can help. Um, and then, you know, just by by uh, hitting the like button and the share button, sharing them out so that people can connect with them. So, Pam, if you could just, you know, tell us where we can find you and, um, you know, just a recap of what you do. Okay. I'm Pam Meisel, president of Evolution Partners, and you can find us at evolutionpartnersins.com. And it pretty much explains anything uh, and everything. If you're in the insurance industry or if you know anybody in the insurance industry, you know, we get a lot, going back to the relationship thing, a lot of our business comes from referrals. Now, I want to mention and something. That was, um, was evolutionpartners.com? 11, yes, yes, yes. Evolutionpartners.com, oh, sorry. I wanted to, I'm typing this in for the audience so oh, that they okay. can follow really easily. And I didn't want to get that wrong. Okay, I'm sorry. Who did I interrupt? Go ahead. It's, it's, <laughs> Suzanne, it's a, Suzanne, you go next. <laughs> sure. So my website is www.undercare.com. And I just wanted to mention, um, you had said something ahead of our conversation about um, how are we managing with COVID-19. And I just quickly wanted to say that, interestingly, Undercare was able to make a quick pivot. And I mean, I'm still doing my regular manufacturing and promoting my, my line, but we've also were able to stop and use some fabric that we had in storage and we made masks. Wow. Yay. Awesome. Wow. Thank you. Very good. Thank you for doing that. Are they made with Velcro? No, they're not. <laughs> but I had all this fabric and I was trying to decide what to do with it. And it was just sitting there. And so I had thought about donating it to Australia. I found an organization to make mittens for the burned koala bear's paws. Yes. <laughs> but mm -hmm. um, Which I thought was such a sweet idea, but the shipping was prohibitive. So I've just been sitting on this trying to figure out what to do. And then COVID wow. hit. And um, I'm happy that we've been able to do that. That's but awesome. um, yeah. Under care, as far as the adaptive clothing, um, check us out. We've got all kinds of interesting things um, happening. And I have to say, I've been really bad about uh, writing the review because I have some of the product. And, you know, I have to admit that when I saw the website and I was like, oh, it's got Velcro. I mean, you're going to sit and it's going to be like rip in the most, right? Is it, You're going to be like in this quiet moment and all of a sudden your, your underwear is going to start having that Velcro tear sound. 
you know, and I'm like, oh man. So I actually took it out of the package and I put it together and I'm like stretching it, I'm pulling it. I'm like, wow, these things are great. And and they're they're comfortable too, I have to say. Yeah, so yeah, good, good. <laughs> review share... pending, guys. Review pending. <laughs> it's special, it's special Velcro. It's not the scratchy, horrible stuff. Mm. No, it they I are uh, on it, it is really monitors. amazing. Right. So thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. That was really good, and uh, and so I just posted your uh, your website undercare.com so that we can find you. you. And you know, please, people, here's the thing. Um, just looking at this and trying to think outside of the box. Also, I saw uh, opportunities like if you had this 25 years ago when I was having a cesarean. I would have been all over these underwear because pu pulling my underwear up over the incision was terrible. Mm -hmm. And I, uh, it, I mean, it was really miserable. Whereas if I had this where I could just wrap it around my stomach and pull it up and, uh, and through, oh my gosh. So it's, I don't think it's just for, um, handicapped or the elderly. Yeah. I mean, if you're, no. if you're thinking about, um, if you, bring, you know, something it, that, or yeah. It's comfortable and it is convenient and um, they're really, really nice products. So anyway, I, I've, I've, uh, I've shilled you enough. Okay. Checks in the mail, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? Thank you. yeah. I appreciate it. I'm just kidding. I'm just no, kidding. Thank you. Uh, I'm not, I'm not kidding about the product, but I, I am kidding about it. She, she's not paying me. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm sorry. Heronberg. We'll be back right after this. Nothing says personality quite like your personal hairstyle. Blue Man is obsessed with creating hair healthy products that make you look good and feel great. Paraben and cruelty free, Blue Man products are made in the USA. Need volume or hold? No problem. Follow Blue Man tips to unlock a look that's uniquely you. Visit blueman.com. That's B L U M. Double am.com I'm I'm getting a little uh, you know uh, punchy here. Been doing here. this a while. I've and, uh, been doing this all day. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay, so heroinberg, um, heroinberg.com, uh, heroin with an e, and then berg with an h, um, and also um, music maker comics, comics with an x. Because we got to be interesting. Um, yeah, if you guys want to check that stuff out, um, it's great. You can check out the uh, the full episodes, and then of course you can um, you can special order any of the comics from uh, Music Maker Comics as well. So yeah, I have a question. And that's it. you on. Yep, go ahead, Pam. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. I have a question about the music that goes with the story. So do you like download it, and then you have headphones on, so you're like reading at the same time the music is going? You can scan it well. Okay, if you have a smartphone, you can uh, scan. It with, yeah, yeah. You can use a barcode scanner, and then you can scan it, and then it will actually play the music as you're reading the story. So wow. you're actually, awesome. yeah, yeah. Very unique. Very unique. Eh, I try. Nice. <laughs> very cool. Uh, mine and is very richards.com. Very simple. M a r i a n n e, and then Richards is the easy part. dot com. And I actually have a place on there where you can schedule a consultation, a free consultation. So I'll spend some time with you. If you have a website you'd like me to review, I'd be more than happy to do it. Um, and I get, as Pam said, word of mouth. People um, tell their friends about me. Other businesses, you know, say, wow, where'd you get that website? And so business is really good. It's, it's wonderful to do good work and have people that really believe in you. You know, and I wanted to ask, I don't want to end this on a negative note, because I wanted to ask about, um, you know, like nightmare clients and nightmare people that you guys work with, but we're not going to go there. We're not going to go there. I don't have any. <laughs> you don't have any. Oh, that, it's spoken like a true marketer. <laughs> slash executive. I love everybody. <laughs> we love everybody. Wow. Yes. Yes, we do. <laughs> But I did want to I did want to finish off with uh, asking that question that I normally do for for every panel and interview that I do is if you could go back in time and tell your younger self one thing, what would it be? Who wants to go first? 
I guess. Okay, I'll good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> I wouldn't change anything. I would not change a thing because, okay. She's a, whoops. Um, oh, I'm sorry. sorry. I, 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 wrong, I got the wrong okay. person. <laughs> okay. All right, you um, go yo, uh, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't yeah, change here. anything. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Okay. There you go. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> because everything, uh, just to go back a little bit, actually really far, but the catalyst to all this, my mom passed away when I was 13. And so I was left after that, after living a very sheltered life, to basically raise myself. And I, and everything from that point and all the people and all the influencers and all the challenges has made me who I am today. I would not change a thing. And I, my daughter, she's 27. And I always tell her since she was really young, just be you, just be you. And that's what's going to make the difference in everything. And never give up, never give up, think out of the box. You know, I have these few sayings, but just to answer your question, um, Meredith, I would not change anything, no matter what. Nice. It's very nice. Who wants to write? Oh, okay, I'm just going to grab somebody in the hot seat and you go. <laughs> Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> um, no, okay. no pressure. Just, just keep going. Just don't stop. Like, I mean, I mean, that's all we can ever actually ask of ourselves, and you know, and it and pays off eventually. So, yeah, mm -hmm. never give up. Okay, there you go. You're in the hot seat, Marianne. Um, for me, I'm a Christian, so I would always just say trust in God because, you know, things happen that you don't think are going the way you want them to, but you keep pushing on, you have faith, you do the things that, you know, that are the right things and it works out, you know, God is good. And that's what I would tell myself. So when you're doubting and when you're struggling, you just say, you know what, I'm doing everything I can and there's a lesson to be learned and we're going to get through this. Okay, great. Uh, and Suzanne? Yes. I mean, yep, Suzanne, yeah, there you I, are. I think I would say, um, just, I would tell myself to just, to be honest about who I am and what I'm good at and believe in those things and cultivate those things. And at the same time, I guess the other little piece of advice would be like not to cut corners. So don't skip over things. Like if there's something I don't really understand or don't know about, um or it's not my area of interest just try to make try to make yourself learn it <laughs> if if that sounds like life advice yeah no i mean it absolutely does i mean when uh i i was a very awkward shy person and you know a lot of people don't know this but i've been voicing this uh more and more is that i uh i was assessed with asperger's in my 30s so i was this you know uh, awkward, shy, um, inadequate person growing up and, you know, teased and I didn't fit in and things like that. And if I could go back and just tell her, um, don't be afraid. Mm -hmm. You're not going to die. And the negative people in your life aren't going to be there for very long, you know, because I, you, you shed them like a skin, you know, like a snake shedding its uh, skin. You grow from that and you move on. And, you know, it's just one of those things where I, I am inspired by all of you and your stories because, you know, I think some of the things that we do to ourselves uh, in at the end of the day is that we say, I can't do it, or um, we compare ourselves to other people when we should be looking in the mirror and saying, how can I improve the person that I'm looking at right now? And I I really do appreciate, we do have a couple more minutes. I don't know if there's anything else that you guys wanted to share uh, before we get over to the next panel. <laughs> yeah, go ahead, I, wanna, you, you go I ahead. just wanna, Meredith, and I said this to you on the phone, but I wanna expand on that. And it's surprising that you just told your story because you are the most engaging person and I really appreciate you and everything you've done for Eric and I, and that you, you're, you and Marianne have very similar traits because it's very rare that you meet someone where they 
I know I haven't met you in person, but they look you in the eyes or you get, a, you know, for sure they're listening to you and that, that, um, and how, you know, is because they repeat back to you what you said to them. And that's, that's a rare trait. So you're really good at what you do. And I want to thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this yeah. and, um, you're in the perfect place. So keep doing what you do. I appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you for taking the time. I mean, it's it's an hour of your day. And I know that for the most part, you're kind of a captive audience. <laughs> so, uh, you know, like, what else are you going to do? What do you mean you can't be on my show? You, you, you have no excuse, lady. <laughs> lady Keith. And, and Mary and I, yeah. <laughs> I, One last I, I really appreciate one last yes, go ahead. Um, uh, Heroinberg.com, like our Facebook page, Twitter, YouTube, and DeviantArt. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. We got, we got another minute. Go ahead. Just put it out there. Put it out there. We've got uh, evolutionpartners.com. We've got undercare.com. Oh, no. Evolutionpartnersins.com. Dot com. All right. We, I want to make sure that I get that uh, right because we don't want to send you off to some, I don't know, some <laughs> other site. Hey, and then we Mary have undercare.com. <laughs> MarianneRichards.com. Heroinberg.com. Um, let me see. I saw Christian and uh, Matthew popping in here. You guys want to get on here? Do you have anything else to say in the last couple minutes? Thank you so much, Meredith. This has been a joy and you've done a great job. What a great interviewer you are. Thank you. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, you know, uh, we're going to have this, we're going to have this uh, on replay on our uh, YouTube and our Facebook channels and the website. And let me, let me just pop one of the boys in here. I'm here. I'm here. See what they have to say. I was trying to talk from the green room and I couldn't say nothing. I was going to yeah. say, Meredith wouldn't let me up in here. She booted me out, but I wanted to thank you ladies so much for joining us. Suzanne, uh, Meredith and I have been a fan of yours for quite some time of your product. Uh, we heard about it through Dennis and I'm really glad that you could join us. And of course, Pam, you know, it goes without saying it. And Marianne, and I'm so sorry. I, I want to keep wanting to just call you Heroin Berg. But I <laughs> that, uh, that is Vendetta. 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 But thank you all so much for showing up. I, me and Eric were over in the background and, and we were kind of doing comments together. And I really, really hope that we can get y'all back for individual lady geek sessions down the road. I think that would be some great segments. Uh, y'all all were great. I was in the background listening the entire time. And usually I take these times to go take a break. But thank y'all so very much. We will be doing this again. And I hope we can count on y'all to be here, a part of it. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, you guys. Stay home. Right. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. You know what, Pam? Before you leave, before yeah. you leave, what is that thing you do at seven o'clock at night? Is it seven or eight o'clock at, at night? Eight o'clock. What do you we guys go doing? outside and we clap for all the medical, you know, emergency workers, all those professionals out there that are on the front line. So at eight o'clock for two minutes, and it started in Spain. And my daughter was doing it. Oh, it's wow. so interesting. Like you hear the whole neighborhood just clapping. So we started doing it in our neighborhood. That's awesome. I've got chill bumps thinking about it because yeah. I, I think about you guys when you do that. Uh, we don't usually have, because I'm rural, so people think I'm crazy. <laughs> uh, they probably do anyway. But, <laughs> but the energy, but I wanted, the energy I you. The world knows. Certifiable. Certifiable. Yeah, I'm here to, to proclaim it. <laughs> Certifiable. Hey, mm -hmm. folks, if you're listening in on the live stream, just give us just a minute and you'll be able to click back in. We've got a reset for the next set. Ladies, again, thank you so very thank much you. for joining thank us. Thank you. Thank you. We thank will you. see y'all again soon, hopefully. Thank okay. you. Take care. Right. Bye. 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 Thank you for tuning in to this segment of Geek Out Virtual Con, the replay with our special panel of women in business, Marianne Richards, Pam Meisel-Smith, Mauricia Malvo, and Suzanne Shoemaker. Be sure to tune in to the Geek Insider podcast available on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. And if you're watching on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button and tell all your friends, because if you don't, you might have to turn in your geek card.